Welcome to the IBM Podcast Network. You're listening to Geek Fruit with Tejas, Jishnu, and Dinkar. Hello and welcome to another episode of Geek Fruit. I'm here with Dinkar in a weird twist of fate. Hello. Jishnu is not yeah. here. And yeah, but I, I think we're just taking turns dropping out. No, but I think it's cool also. It's like a it's rolling cool. substitution kind of scene. This is true. Yeah. Neither one of us is the most important. We're bigger than the sum of our parts. Except Jishnu because he's been in pretty much every episode until Actually, here. Is this the first episode this he's missed? This is the first time he's not been there, I think. Yeah. That is a shame. So, no, but full marks to him, man. Yeah. Like hardcore attendance. He's one of those nerds <laughs> in school he's the guy who has 99% right. attendance he's the one who gets extra marks for attendance <laughs> yeah. and probably good handwriting because he's really a nerd yeah and he writes like a lot of songs and so he like he, he's a hardcore like writer in a book like he's old school uh, like that after I heard this one uh, Dave Matthews story of uh, like I also used to write in a notebook like hardcore mm-hmm. old school vibes pencil pen stuff but uh, I just read this interview where he wrote one of my favorite songs of his like by Dave Matthews band called You and Me yeah, yeah. and like um I was just reading the story. He's like, uh, yeah, I was on a, I was on the bus, the tour, like the tour bus or whatever. And he's like, yeah. And I was thinking, and then so I just pulled out my iPhone and I wrote it on that. And I was just like, oh, if Dave Matthews writes on an iPhone, then I can also write on an iPhone. But you got it. Yeah, he, like even yeah. I started writing on. The I use this yeah. thing called Edit Pad, which is really just a website where you go and it's this blank yellow thing, and you type out. It's but it like saves Notepad. on the website. It saves on the website, yeah. Okay. Now I've been using Evernote. So, yeah. so no. what you have to do is then write it in a notebook later. <laughs> oh. So you can Instagram pictures of it and whatnot. Oh, that's so true. <laughs> yeah. You, other screenshots just don't have the yeah, same appeal. <laughs> but it's fine. I mean, but the thing is that I used to make a lot of notes and scratch them out and stuff. And so now if I just had to reproduce Which is handy. it. Now you've got like V1, V2. <laughs> Final, final underscore one. <laughs> final underscore underscore. Final, final. Yeah. <laughs> All right, cool. So, does, this, do you think Dave Matthews looks like Tom Hanks? Because this is a theory of, of course. Mine. Yeah, right, dude. He totally does. And uh, another comparison. Uh, I was watching Sting play at the Bataclan, the yeah, yeah, yeah. F- the you know the arena, which was you know. Right now, by after terrorists. the new album. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it was after the new album, but they also invited him to reopen it after the. It's been a year oh, since the okay, terrorist okay. attacks, and he did the entire show in French. But I was just thinking, the top half, and I also saw him on Stephen Colbert, another mm. episode, like thing. Yeah. Top half of his head looks exactly like Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> what? Yeah, he has the same exact same <laughs> hairline. Okay, this like just cover the bottom of his. Yeah, it's what? like Arnold Schwarzenegger has a fatter head, like he's a wider head. Yeah, but definitely. If you, if you thin him out, if you like Photoshop <laughs> Control T transform. He's uh, he's Sting. They have the same hairline and I the same like hair color and the same eyes. Sting in Dune and David <laughs> Bowie in Labyrinth. Of course, are like yes, twins. Another They're thing, brothers yeah, from another mother's. Very true. And yeah, were they? Con- yeah, they were contemporaries. Obviously, I mean, like uh, they were. Yeah. Did they ever do stuff together? Like, I guess they're the, the exact same age, right? Yeah, they were they? Exact, yeah really? he died at sixty-nine. He's sixty-five now. Uh, oh, Sting. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. Huh. Interesting. Interesting. Except Sting is in really good shape. We're still talking about music here. Okay, yeah, cool. We're gonna yoga. let's just let's get, get into what the topic of this episode is. Yes. So, um, I just saw Chappie last night for the first time. Yeah. Yeah. How is that? Neil Blomkamp. Mm-hmm. Uh, so Neil Blomkamp, great director, South African, done some really good movies in the science fiction, the hard science fiction space. Yeah. Uh, now we have to distinctify between was hard. Was there something sci-fi. between District Nine and Chappie? I feel like there was. Yeah, there was Elysium. Oh right, of with course. With Matt Damon with Matt and Damon. again, uh, Charlton Copley, one yeah. of the, my favorite guys ever. <laughs> yes, he's, he's so amazing, and he's there in all three films. Hmm. So I saw Chappie yesterday, hard science fiction film, but again, like a little lighter than his previous two. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, not I mean overall decent and uh, I mean that's kind of and I've been trying to watch this movie for a while but it's just you know been delayed that kind of gave rise to the idea that hey maybe we should talk about science fiction movies which are thoroughly underappreciated yes. I'm not saying Chappie is one mm-hmm. but I am saying that there are many out there that both of us have spoken about so much yeah. and we just haven't we were like man we should really talk about some underappreciated and we don't underrated. get a chance to because yeah. we've got to talk about the big ones the, yeah we always we're, you know weekly where you know yeah we have to talk about the big ones. Yeah. This is right. So we're taking the time out now to talk about some underappreciated, underrated films and what and why you should watch yeah. them. Yes. Without giving too many spoilers. I I mean like I feel like yeah. we we will kind of talk about why they're great and that might go into 
you know a few spoilery details but it's okay i feel like that will happen mild spoilers let's mild. we won't give away the absolute ending yeah is what <laughs> <laughs> the mid credit scene we'll talk mid-cred, about the yeah. post one we'll go all right <laughs> cool so uh we go should we take a break and then go into it Oh, we just let's just talk about let's it. All right. all right. So I have no idea how we're gonna do this, but I think we've both picked a few films. Yeah. I don't know. Well, I'm pretty sure there might be some overlap there. I'm guessing. But uh, do I'm you want to like, go first? If nothing else, we we probably work from the same pool of movies. Yeah, because so, <laughs> so let's just like let's throw out. Our movies and then like go like oh, oh yeah I love that okay and then <laughs> so should we just say the movie names first and then go into it yes all right cool because I have like, a drum roll before I have it. six movies but we should talk about movies that we probably have seen together so we can talk about them okay yeah uh, so my first movie was Moon. Oh, nice. What yes. a good movie, man. Amazing movie. Also on my list, but like not my main main list, but yes. Mm-hmm. So I Moon, directed by. By Duncan, David Bowie Duncan, Jr. Yeah, David Duncan Bowie Jones. Jones. Duncan Jones, who did Warcraft, which was yes. quite sad. I mean, in terms of the movie, and 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 not in terms of why, as in like why it was uh, when it was created, it was quite sad because he's yeah. uh, he somebody had cancer, his dad died, so a bunch of things that bookended his filmmaking experience, which may and have then affected he put out the Warcraft. film. Exactly, which so, kind of uh, may have tainted idea. the experience, yeah, for him. Yeah. But his first, I think, was this his first feature? This was his first movie. All he right. was a commercial director before that. Oh, poor guy. <laughs> yeah, anybody who's done advertising, oh, sorry for for that. But I think uh, commercial directors are cool. They get to do whatever they want. No, as in like uh, commercial directors or commercial directors. Ad directors. <laughs> oh, ad directors. They get paid a shitload. Oh yeah, they get paid a shitload. But like it's it, at least in India, it's it's back breaking. Yes. But mindless. I feel like in the Unless US, you're especially no. some of my favorite filmmakers have come from the ad and music video world. Music video world your, for sure. Uh, Spikes, uh, Spike, and, uh, Michelle, Michelle Gondry. Gondry. Um, uh, I think David Fincher also was. David Fincher also yeah, yeah was a music video and ad guy. So I think also because this the, that generation kind of grew up in the MTV. Generation. Yeah. So when music videos were truly mad, like they were absolutely like they had no semblance of anything that was, you know, you know, structured. Yeah, which and is great. Yeah, and there was a lot of freedom that. to like do whatever you want. I feel want like we've lost the... that now. You know, like nobody can make a music video anymore, which is seemingly meaningless. But can still get away with it. I don't know. Like yeah, actually, people be like, of... "Yeah, but where's the story, man?" And I'm one of those people who says, "Where's the story, man?" Where's but story? yeah, but I mean, you can do anything. Yeah, in a music I video. can't think of like the last music video that was really. Hmm. Yeah. Anyway, so Moon then. Moon. Great movie. Yeah. So if you haven't seen Moon, Moon is about a lone astronaut on the moon. Basically, this is... Uh, it was somewhere in the 2070s, 80s, something like that, right? Yeah. It's a few a, hundred years in the few, future. Not a few hundred. I think it's about 50, 60 years in the future. 50, 60 years in the future. Basically, we found a resource called H3O. Yeah. That, helium-3. Yeah, helium-3 or something that we can uh, resource only and so, uh, you know, only from, solely from the moon. Yeah. And that basically uh, provides energy to power yeah. everything on the Earth. So, so it's there a, was an... Uh, like, the oil has run out on Earth or yeah. something like that, right? It's a renewable source. I mean, yeah. renewable as in like it's a new source of, of yeah. energy. So and it has to be mined from moon rocks. Yeah. But the only there's only a sole a person who is required to do this job. And that job is placed on the very capable shoulders of Sam Rockwell, who plays... Sam Bell. Sam Bell, <laughs> yeah. So uh, Sam Bell is this one guy... Seemingly normal guy, chill guy. He has mm-hmm. a family back on Earth, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Yes, he does. Actually, that's the, yeah, that's the premise yeah, yeah. of the film. So he has a family back on Earth, and he's there. And his only company is... And he's the only actor in the movie, actually. Like, yeah. the only physical like, literally person. Literally the only... Yeah. yeah. And the other person is uh, is a robot. Another very memorable one, I gotta say. Yeah. Is, I love it when they add to the canon of, like, you know, memorable... Like, when TARS was Robots there... Robots with personalities, basically. Exactly. When yeah. TARS was there in Interstellar, Tars. I was like... Amazing! We have one more great, memorable robot. Yeah. Another one I'm hoping is going to be great is uh, is Alan Tudyk in uh, Rogue One. Yeah. yeah. I hope I hope that goes down as one of the one of the famous ones. But yeah, in this one in Moon, we've got Gertie, mm-hmm. who's played by Kevin Spacey. I mean, yes. like he's voiced by Kevin Spacey. Yeah. And he's got a big. He's kind of like Tars in terms of like he's a towering kind of. Yeah, I feel like a monolith. lot of things about this movie. Yeah. Where, like when I think about it, uh, they very similar elements to Interstellar. He's mm-hmm. got like the family back home. Exactly. He's got, yeah. There's this like whole time scene happening yeah so he can't communicate with his family uh 
in real time. In real time, yes. He can only receive messages from the past. Yeah. Or so it seems. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're going to yeah. get into spoilers apparently. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, basically, his only company is Gertie, who kind of does all the operations for the entire space station. And uh, yeah, and 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 basically, what happens is over the course of his day, he continues to do this, and he's coming towards the end of his uh, of his term of there. his contract yeah, yeah like so and which after which he wants to go home but he comes across a certain anomaly uh, in his uh, while he's you know completing his tasks he finds another astronaut mm-hmm. and uh, that basically leads to a bunch of complications where he uh, uh, should we talk uh, about I it no uh, but yeah, i mean yeah, okay. i think it's okay to say it. so basically yeah, say it. he finds himself he finds another what? Sam Bell and who's like really deteriorated like he's really like almost uh, at the verge of you know dying he mm-hmm. finds him and he brings him back to the to the hab and uh, that's where he basically tries to recuperate him tries to answer like find out what what like what the hell is going on and basically he seems to be like a clone of him so so that's basically the premise of the film yes now why this movie is so great is because it uh, at least for me is just that uh, apart from you know it just felt really fresh because it had an indie budget kind of. I mean, yeah. it still holds up fine. Like everything looks legit. Yeah. But it had it a does. very. It was a very indie movie at the time, and you know now it's got a cult following. But like, just like really well, like really fresh. That's yeah, that's what definitely. I felt. Yeah. And we're always looking for good science fiction this movies, was, which uh, are not what, around action based. Two thousand six, Ten? seven. Oh, really? That long ago? Yeah, I think it's quite old. I'm not sure. Well, yeah, well, for that time especially amazing movie. Yeah, great movie, yeah, and yeah. the entire thing rests just on Sam Rockwell's yeah. performance. Yeah, and he, all of them, he all of it. his performances, and he is amazing. Like he's powerhouse. But he's a, he's generally like a, like I keep saying he's the new Kevin Bacon. <laughs> yeah. He really is, dude. He's like, just like a guy. solid dude. Yeah, he's a solid, cool guy. He can dance, dude. The guy yeah. can dance, man. Like he he does it in all these like. Uh, award ceremonies or whatever when he goes on what? the stage and stuff and he and because he was such a good dancer that John Favreau asked him to do it in Iron Man like even when he comes on stage I'll say All that right, yeah, yeah. he's a kick ass dancer and he's also, anyway another reason why he's like Kevin Bacon <laughs> yeah. but yeah no dancing in Moon <laughs> no dancing no dancing <laughs> sorry okay uh, but yeah man and um, so basically this movie it just really it was really fresh when it came out mm-hmm. good new director really good script uh, and you know I, I love it when there's like a really small cast just handling the whole thing Kevin Spacey despite not being a physical presence in the movie excellent work excellent work and yeah. he's he can be creepy and awesome at the same time yeah and really you know like, like even so Gertie has a yeah. legit character arc yeah. happening where really he good changes arc. over the course of the movie yeah. Yeah. He, yeah. and this is something that I've always really loved about robots so like and, and you know when they're not uh, portrayed as evil like evil kind of you know mm-hmm. sentient like AI like basically HAL what how, yeah. how HAL ruined everyone's like from the 60s yeah. onwards ruined robots for everybody's imagination yeah. I think it's been redeemed by people like you know like Gertie like uh, say TARS or you know mm-hmm. like people like that or R2 whatever it is you yeah. know like they've been redeemed like in the eyes of like humans that they are like, genuinely helpful characters I think Gertie's a great addition robots to that. can be good yeah re- robots are great I mean, I, I've written one science fiction story and I had to make sure that I always feel like robots being like at the height of their intelligence mm-hmm. would always feel sympathy for humankind so like you know like basically like you'd feel bad for us because we're so Stupid, <laughs> yeah. and I think any any sentient smart being would be able to recognize like, that. Like, oh, I'll help you guys out. Yeah, like Chappie, like like the movie that I just watched recently. Anyway, so great movie, everyone. Definitely, you should definitely watch, watch Moon. Uh, definitely on the top of my list. Okay, cool. So we're gonna take a short break. Yep. And we'll come back talk about a couple of other films and what uh, other co members from Geek Fruit had to say about their favorite underrated films. Hey guys, this is Malika Singhania, co-founder of the blog Stylogram, where we cover trends, fashion forecasts, celebrity style, tips and tricks, and lots more cool stuff. So tune in every Thursday to the Stylogram podcast, your weekly style telegram, giving you the latest fashion and beauty stories that are relevant to you. You can also subscribe to our show on iTunes, SoundCloud, Audioboom, or any other local podcast app. See you soon. Right, we're back uh, talking about underrated science fiction films. I'm here with Dinkar. Hi. Hello. Okay, cool. Second movie. Second movie. I was gonna. I was gonna. It was hard one to pick. Mm-hmm. Actually, it's not hard. Like there are plenty of movies. Yeah. But I had to go with something I know both you and I love. This is. It's an animated movie called Titan AE. Ooh. Yes. Nice. Right. So Titan AE. Um, I don't know how to even explain this movie. This movie 
was uh, pre Firefly, pre was, yeah, Battlestar pre- Galactic. I think this came out everything. Yeah. And it has that like super BSG vibe. Like it's got yeah, that Battlestar definitely. Galactica vibe. Uh, it's an animated film. At the time when it came out, I think I, it was not part of any big, uh, you know, motion picture house. Was it? It's not Disney. It's not. No, no, it, it was not DreamWorks Disney or anything, sure. right? It was no. just like a random I don't, house. Correct me sure. if I'm wrong, but I don't think DreamWorks <clears throat> existed then. Wow, really? Like yeah, DreamWorks animation, this was right? Shrek, right? Yeah, I think so. I was really young when it came out. I yeah. remember having this on two VCDs. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> yeah. Clearly a long time so, ago. and and uh, I think it was uh, it was available on VHS as well. And uh, so, I think anyway. if I remember correctly, this might have been the first movie I went to watch in a theater by myself. Oh by, yeah, by myself. I being watch like, in the theater with yeah. friend steps without uh-huh. parental supervision. Oh yeah, sure. Yeah, 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 definitely. So let me just talk about this for a second. This movie came out way back when we were all kids. Okay, uh, and it, not from any again major distribution house or anything like that. But awesome cast, amazing story, super underrated. I feel, and probably the greatest soundtrack after Daredevil with Ben <laughs> Affleck. Yeah? yeah. All right. So uh, Titan A. Let me just talk about this. Uh, it's basically a story about. So A E stands for After Earth, and it's about this young Earth's done. Earth. Earth Earth is is <laughs> not a thing anymore. Yeah, it's not a scene. Uh, basically, what happens right at the top of the movie? Uh, there's a young kid. His name is Kale, and Kale is uh, played by Matt Damon. So again, first off, big cast. So this is a big cast, right? This is Matt yeah. Damon, Drew, Drew Barrymore, Barrymore. Uh, Bill Bill Pullman. Yeah, is, uh, your, uh, this Corso, guy, the, Yeah, the, nice. The, the other guy. Yeah. So great cast. I think Steve, not Steve Buscemi. I think yeah, uh, Bill Pullman. Uh, John Leguizamo is in it also. That is true. This guy, so amazing cast. All right. So it's a story of how Earth is about to be destroyed by an alien race called the Dredge, and then the Dredge basically, they are. Uh, they just want to eradicate humans and it's not made clear why in the beginning but all they keep reiterating in the movies is that they're made of pure energy and they just want to destroy earth so in a last ditch effort uh, Kale's father at the time he's a, one of the top scientists he creates a, a, a vehicle called Titan and Titan basically holds the, the DNA strands of all the major biological and you know animal kingdom this you know, is what DNA. Kale discovers as yeah. he goes on yeah, he he's, goes a, on. he's a waiter type when he's a it kid, yeah he's a kid when, when yeah. Earth is being destroyed it's like you know it's like us remembering this movie now yeah. it's like him remembering when yeah. Earth was destroyed <laughs> yeah. right? exactly so uh, it, it, so he leaves the, he leaves the Earth in one of the last few like spaceships and he and, and they take off and they go and we cut to like and he never sees his father again so cut to like 20 years later he's a young man mm-hmm. and all he has is who looks oddly like Matt Damon <laughs> who looks exactly like yeah. Matt Damon pretty much and all he has been bequeathed by his father is a, is a ring uh, and that ring he doesn't know anything about it he just has it and it's because it's important to him because he never saw his father again and he's a waiter and he just works on this off world kind of thing he mm-hmm. cleans spaceships and things like that where he comes across Bill Pullman's character whose name is Corso and uh, I can't remember her name Drew Barrymore's uh, name it, I cannot she plays like this Asian American kind of uh, character I want to say she's Asian American something like that yeah uh, Akima. Akima Akima so he meets right. there you go so Akima he meets Akima and uh, so basically uh, Bill Pullman is the, his course is the one to tell him that that ring is not just any ring it's the map to the titan and the titan is the key to bringing the earth's uh, or having a human settlement yeah. Like an, another settlement And so The whole thing unfolds there It's a great story I don't want to get into it more But you guys This is One of my it's favorite one of, movies Easily one of the best That yeah. has been forgotten by It time. has been I, I mean like a It's shame. a cult class Do you know who gave a pass On the script also by the way Who? Joss Whedon What? Yeah so and he, uh, uh, oh yeah, this was in his uh, script doctoring phase. Isn't script it? doctoring phase, and uh, I mean, he—I don't know if he's proud of it or not. Like somebody asked him a question on uh, uh, on his AMA on Reddit, mm-hmm. and he they they asked him so what which joke from your body of work are you most proud of? And he, all he replied was Titan A. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, I don't know if he meant it like, like this movie was a joke. This movie was a joke, or maybe that he's proud of it, like you know, in a weird, funny, ironic way, which it should be because the movie is great. Yeah, it's a so it was a 20th century Fox movie. It apparently. was a 20th century Fox I didn't movie. Realize. Now I've come. So yeah, it wasn't come. like a small movie for sure. It, but I don't know. It just didn't do well. Is it? 
I don't remember it doing particularly well. Yeah, because like everyone I talk to, like don't apart from like like hardcore nerds, like they don't really know about this movie. They don't yeah. know it. Was, it was not like. But I feel like for so for, for hardcore nerds of our age, this was probably like one of those initiating kind of movies. Maybe yeah. I remember looking at posters in the newspaper. Yeah, so yeah. you know this was a long time ago, in the days <laughs> of newspapers, and going like, whoa, this looks amazing. What is yeah, this? And this was amazing, despite I mean at the time, I mean we were not so committed to knowing. I mean we were into IMDb, but we. Didn't know that you know there Bill no, Pullman. I don't remember IMDb back then. I, I remember IMDb I read a review the in 90s. the paper <laughs> and went to watch this movie. Man, I remember IMDb in the nineties though. It was like what? a different world. All it's is really it's pretty much. I mean, the interface is still st- structured the same, mm-hmm. but now it's all you know designed well and all that stuff. But I remember back in the day, and my brother introduced me to it. And I was like, wow, this is awesome. This I think how I became and I just to read the trivia <laughs> all the time. Anyway, but um, yeah, so amazing movie, great soundtrack that. Like two, three songs which are Great forever visuals for yeah, sure. Yeah, there's this one song by the Urge called "It's My Turn to Fly." Yeah. It's my time to fly. Amazing it's my song. Time to fly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, really which is good. Uh, it plays when he takes control of the spaceship. Of the, the first spaceship. Time. Yeah, yeah. so good. That one's there. There's Cosmic Castaway. Great song. Oh yeah. And uh, another song called "Over My Head" by a band <laughs> called Lit. Which is well, so relevant like, now You should think they're back in fashion <laughs> So is Kale Because Kale is super healthy <laughs> This is true <laughs> Oh god yeah, Kale is lit yo Yeah Kale is lit And uh, yeah Matt Damon's doing fine Yeah he's doing so, absolutely fine I think this was the phase where like They were like Hey everyone's doing an animated film might Let's, as well Yeah, throw in one Yeah, so I feel like this was pre-Spider-Man Even And Spider-Man Did, you, did you find out what oh, year yeah, this movie sorry, came out? look it up 2001? 2000, 2000. 2000. Oh, my God. So the same year as Spider Man. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, and uh, the Matrix. No, Matrix was 1999. The film's yeah. animation technique combines traditional hand drawn animation and computer and the 3D, generated yeah, imagery. Yeah. It was great. Yeah, because like, I remember the 3D sequences being spectacular. They like were that, really the good. spaceship the sequence spaceship, where you, like, yeah, going through, through those ghosts. Yeah. Those, uh, wake ghosts or something. Wake ghosts? Yeah, yeah. Basically, uh, they follow spaceships. Oh, wa- right. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. Like, you know, like, like the what is left know? in their trail, exactly, right? Yeah. Yes. It's oh, yeah, awesome, I think those were wake ghosts, something like that. But really cool, like, cool concepts and the. Ending is real, like it's emotional, it's yeah. good, and it, there's a good, re- like reasoning and supporting, like in the whole why everything happens and why the you know dredge are after the humans, you know, and stuff. Yeah, so it like all makes sense. Yeah, yeah. So it's and really good, and uh, yeah, man. I uh, definitely good. one of the amazing movie. Definitely, if you haven't seen it, dig it up again. I think we've like yeah, we've stirred clear of spoilers on this one. Yeah, sure. yeah, we have. So because you should definitely watch this movie. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah. we should as well. And yeah, like, man, we see, should. Just I wonder go. how it holds up. It's been a while. I'm sure it does. You know, I think I saw it maybe four or five years ago. If it was coming yeah. on TV or something, I don't know. But I was just enjoying yeah, it so much. You saw it on TV. I feel like I yeah, haven't yeah. heard about this movie in ages. Yeah, it's, yeah. But it's so good. Amazing movie. All right, cool. Uh, so yes. That was mine. <laughs> yeah. Uh, one of mine at least right. um, You want to go What's with next? the next one? Uh, so my next one is not uh, Well it's not underrated really But I feel like it doesn't get enough recognition Especially as a sci-fi movie Okay Eternal Sunshine Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind Yes, yes definitely. What a great movie I think like easily one of the best sci-fi movies And hard sci-fi of- Again uh, But it's I think it walks that fine line between being a high, hard science fiction film because they have the technology they have present, the technology you know. Uh, but it, yeah, obviously, it borders more on the emotion behind science uh, exactly. behind the science, which is what the best which science is what fiction. I, so I feel do. like the best science fiction and the best hard sci-fi explore like the the human motivation behind stuff. Of like course. Moon definitely does that definitely. to a large extent. Yeah. Uh, like Interstellar does yeah. that. So I feel like that really happens here as well. So it's got Jim Carrey and Kate Winslet and Kirsten Dunst and stuff. So and it's got like it's and funny. Elijah it's, Wood and Elijah Wood, and, Mark uh, Ruffalo and Tom Wilkinson. Yes, this is an insane cast. <laughs> it's yeah. an amazing cast. <laughs> yeah, great cast. A great, great writer. Yeah. Great director. Yeah. yeah, Charlie Kaufman. Right? Charlie Kaufman. Yeah, man, that guy is some other level of. Yeah, Another writer. of his movies that I considered, though I don't know if it's it's not necessarily sci-fi, but Which being John Malkovich, amazing movie, amazing movie. Is it sci-fi? I don't know. It's, it's just not. It's it is surreal for sure. It's surreal, like all the films. Even adaptation, my gosh, yeah, adaptation it just is also like absolutely drives surreal. me nuts, man. Watching yeah. that and Synecdoche, New York. Ooh, my that God, movie again. Is, uh, just like yeah, it's a crazy. mind f. Yeah, it's a full <laughs> mind f. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, Eternal Sunshine. I think um, th- I've always said there's something really tragic about watching a comedic actor do drama. Like I don't know why it just brings out the 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 you know the whole Pagliacci syndrome, yeah, yeah, which is yeah. you get to see them at a point of time where they're not being funny. Yeah, and it just you know you expect them. But it's I almost like, like poking so them. The saying, best yeah. comedic actors they have this like. 
pathos that really brings out it amazing works. like Robin, Robin Williams, Williams without, I mean, goes without probably saying. the best example of uh, it I feel like Jim Carrey also this yeah. is easily one of his this best one, performances I mean like he, this easily one, one of his best performances Man on the Moon Man Truman on, Show dude, the guys Truman Show like, uh, but again those two are still uh, based on based in comedy yeah by the way of. Man on the Moon sorry this may to, just to bring up another Kaufman uh, Andy Kaufman hmm? he apparently has faked his own death. That That's what they out. say. Yeah. yeah, it's not. No, true. no, but apparently he's alive and kicking. There are like uh, multiple reports of that. I've just this read. This is not. No, it's been that rumor has been kicking around since the day he died. It's no, like no, no, Elvis no, no, coming back. No, something uh, like recently. Like I remember my flatmate was telling me this. Like like four four reels type kind yeah. of thing. But like I mean, it doesn't matter. It could be anybody. It could be a hoax. Obviously. Like, but yeah, yeah especially man. because he was famous for basically doing this kind of thing. All for the time. reinventing himself by you know doing yeah, yeah doing the characters weird shit, that yeah. he. Lived in, but he's he's de- he did he did. I'm pretty sure he did. Yeah, but what a guy! And anyway, sorry to bring th- and to just to bring that out. Jim Carrey, amazing guy. Also, like I, I don't know, I think his his girlfriend like passed away recently. Mm-hmm. Jim Carrey, and he made his first appearance at the Golden Globes. And just watching him speak there also just felt like. Oh my god This is just I don't There is some There is some pathos man You're yeah. right There is something that happens Even, even like Even someone like Adam Sandler for yeah. example Who you wouldn't for think sure. Has any like Deeper mm. levels Than what he does Definitely uh, He's great in Funny People yeah. He's Rain awesome Over Me he's yeah. great Rain in, Over Me One of my favorites Dude, John, Ch- John Cheadle as well Yeah. Oh yeah Don Cheadle and him yes. Great great movie I, I'm just, I don't know what it is There's something really good And I think it's brought out Extremely well In this fashion Particularly because This movie is about Relationships And human relation yeah. And you just Expect that clown You know the clown to be you know a popular person be fine but he's secretly not and this yeah. is a great I mean, just a great way to, to see that uh, the other part of this movie which I just love generally I mean like there's so many things about it, like um, what's the name of the car Lacuna I think Lacuna, yeah, Lacuna Lacuna Tech or something like yeah that. which is basically the so basically what the, the premise of the movie mm-hmm. is basically that this company called Lacuna Tech can erase specific memories from your mind yeah so basically if you have a lover like who you've, you just don't want to think about anymore they'll just remove selective memory yeah, yeah. from it so which is what uh, Kate Winslet's character does and uh, Kate Winslet and Jim Carrey used to date yeah. she gets uh, all her memories of Jim Carrey removed Jim yeah. Carrey gets pissed off and he goes like well I'm gonna do that too then. yeah exactly and then uh, like a solid chunk of the movie like almost more than half of it I they think spent in is his mind, inside yeah. Jim Carrey's mind where where basically once the procedure started he's changed his mind yeah, he's he like no I want to hang the, on to those memories and so he tries to hide in yeah. the memory of like in take her from his from existing memories, memories and put her into like memories the, where she didn't exist exactly which yeah. is like that is so hard Dude, there's that one amazing scene I don't know if you've seen the, the making of it the behind the scenes where basically he had to pop up in different places oh, yeah, 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 yeah. and that's not like special effects it's, or anything. it's all practical he just ran yeah, <laughs> he yeah. just ran the his special ass effects off. in this movie amazing, amazing. like uh, even those parts where like you know like a scene shuts off here because like all the lights go off. It's very theater. It's very theater. That's very true. In a lot true. of ways, yeah, which is again like Mikhail Gondry spectacular. Yeah. What a, what a, I think one of his, uh, one of his uh, music video like <laughs> yeah, it's, characters. It's, it's, like it's a music video come to life. Yeah, he's amazing. I mean, the story is beautiful. I mean, it's it's very it's a heart wrenching kind of story. Which is the thing because uh, yeah. so I feel like when I was watching the movie, mm-hmm. a lot of the time you spend thinking about the sci fi aspects of it, where you're like, this is amazing. But yeah. when you walk away from the movie, yeah, it's the, the emotion that you walk away with. And like, man, that ending, heartbreaking. Yeah, it's heartbreaking. And the other thing is that just like generally best sci-fi, like it'll take that, it'll take a concept which we only know too well yeah. and exaggerate it using science, you know, like saying, like it's it like it's like what Black Mirror does, right? Like yes. the first episode of Black Mirror, uh, which we were talking about in another episode, just about how we rate people on an everyday. But like that happens. But what if you exaggerate that just to prove a point and just reflect what, Society is like yeah. This is exactly that Like we're just taking Technology and saying Yeah what if you could Actually get rid of Somebody from your mind <laughs> Yeah And how would that feel And then And it's true This is sorry Just to bring up One of my favourite shows Of all time Gilmore Girls Which yes. is coming back Which is um, Oh man can't wait One of my favourite Anyway So in that also I remember in like One of the early seasons uh, Rory is trying to Get rid of like All the stuff That reminds her of Dean Yes And oh, man. <laughs> and her mother And obviously Lorelai just Lorelai. says Yeah I'm going to Throw it away But she keeps the box She's like Because one day You're going to Want to remember And Hold on to this stuff yeah. And feel good about it Which is essentially Like, like this that's, is a, that's, everything. that's everything That's yeah. everything man That's everything anyway, Like the movie. best sci-fi Always asks Who are we Or yeah. who are you It's 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 about identity About like what we really mean So Eternal Sunshine Is basically about like If you could erase All yeah. the stuff That's <laughs> happened to you Are you still the same person Yeah and would you even Like that in the end Like in retrospect yeah. You'd feel bad about it Except you won't be able To remember it <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's the only difference Yeah, yeah so yeah. Eternal Sunshine <laughs> You definitely feel bad For uh, unspecified reason One of the most like 
human science fiction films yeah. like yeah it's not got ai or anything like that. it's just literally about memory and that's yeah. yeah that's amazing it's it's definitely one of the one of the better ones um what's next let me just pull up okay so i have a bunch of films i don't know which ones to talk <laughs> like, about pull one at random what we got okay we've got <laughs> I I feel like we've spoken a lot about some seriously good movies yeah. that to bring up Equilibrium. Oh my be... god, that was going to be my next movie. <laughs> that one, movie is so good. That movie is really good. Uh, but so I I started watching it last night. Okay, I just I watched also, a little bit of it I last night. I was like so I was caught between rewatching either Moon or Equilibrium last night because I was like, man, these movies are so good while I was thinking about them. I yeah. literally just like got pumped up. I was like, done, let's do both. Yeah. And then I watched neither because I fell asleep. <laughs> <laughs> let me just tell you so let me just tell people about Equilibrium and Jishnu hasn't seen this movie either okay which oh, okay. i told i uh, know i think sorry jishnu i think jishnu or uh, even my flatmate abhimanyu and he watches like everything science fiction i was like how have you not this is got bail it's got yeah it's got a, like, like great performance yeah, like, he's this is where like the expression he has on his face the entire time is yeah. the batman face it's the batman face pretty yeah. much right so this is exactly what i thought <laughs> last night as well and um yet another movie where sean bean is taken away earlier yes. than his time it's not a spoiler it's just is the story it's, i mean you know yeah. sean bean's in it he going yeah, die he going die that's what i was one day I was like wait in the Martian I was like wait how will he die now <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's the question how yeah. he would they would replace Matt Damon with Sean Bean or something <laughs> like that just, just to kill off Sean Bean anyway so to come back Equilibrium is a movie that came out I think again the the 2010s uh, the, the yeah. first decade of 2000 and um, it stars Christian Bale Ty Diggs Sean Bean um a couple of uh, you know good like, yeah, really it's, good it's, it's characters all, yeah. and uh, this the story is it kind of reminds me a little bit of Vifa Vendetta is that we live in a like a post uh, not like a post uh, you know world war yeah. apocalyptic uh, they're, state they're all survivors of world war 3 if world i remember war III, correctly right right and uh, because and uh, this authoritarian government has taken over exactly and it's only because they realize that humans are very vulnerable to their emotions uh, that that's what kind of drives them to to fight with people and to yeah. you know to have emotions like anger and rage and frustration and revenge like the, and the propaganda like is only emotion causes war exactly yeah. only emotion causes is that right so uh, w- what this authoritarian state now has to deal with is the fact that they make every citizen consume like a pill that uh, desensitizes you um nothing in the state itself like the entire world of this this tiny universe has anything that can evoke emotion yeah. so like for example like there's no art there's no culture basically yeah. culture has been removed um and uh, like even there's a really cool scene also that the, the, yeah, the mirror Mona Lisa one and, uh, so the Mona oh, Lisa yeah. is burnt alive yeah. very early in the film when they uh, so th- anyway so basically the government has a bunch of uh, a, a, a task force called the Grammaton cleric I don't know how they came up with that yeah. I don't know what the linguistic like the root the etymology is but I so uh, if I like my interpretation of the movie was that like emotion is basically like an analog for religion here right right, right, right yeah, because yeah. why they're called clerics in i mean like the rhetoric of okay, a lot of people now is like religion causes fair wars enough. and okay. they're like emotion causes wars okay. which is like really the same thing taken so to I an extreme i didn't get the grammaton bit though so i was just not i was just like oh okay, cool <laughs> they're name they're grammar nazis <laughs> yeah that's the only thing i could think of burn so, that mona lisa and by the way it's, it's you spell- apostrophe r e <laughs> <laughs> we'll need some conditions though, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh yeah so uh, Christian Bale is a is a grammaton cleric he's hired by the government he's a, basically his job his is to His wife uh was put to death Yeah right? his wife was put to death yeah. because she felt emotion <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> And his son is also like dressed up exactly like him they all yeah. wear black there's no there's nothing everything is stark black and white everything is square there's no sh- yeah, like there's corners a, like, or shit Yeah there's like colors and yeah. stuff also there's, no color. there's a nice scene also where he like you know abducts like they basically um, have a break into another person's house mm-hmm. and they find like there's just a mirror but the mirror has like a frame and that frame is very oh, yeah, ornate yeah, yeah. and beautiful and it's like no mirrors that are allowed to have frames <laughs> and so they get rid of that also uh, so you're not allowed to see the sunrise you're yeah. not allowed to look at yourself Anything, for too long yeah, yeah. But you are supposed to live your life in equilibrium in equilibrium yeah in the, uh, sorry, in the state of libria that's the name of the place yeah. so you know so I was watching this last night and I was just like oh it's, it's still a very good 
premise but i think it's very dated like i don't think it's aged extremely well because it's because mostly an action film like it it is an action an film an amazing action it invented uh, gun fu gun fu yeah. <laughs> yeah so basically yeah kung fu with guns and it's cool it's really it felt a little i was watching it again i was like a little cringe when he does some of the moves yeah. like you know moving his hands above his heads and and shooting it in different directions it was a little Um, But even back then, it was it was a pretty over the top. It was movie. it's very over the top. Yeah. It goes without saying. So anyway, so the point is that uh, um, in an accident one day, uh, you know, Christian Bale's character he forgets to take his his, uh, his, his desensitize his what's it called? It's called a prosium. Prosium. The yeah. I, his intervals. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he forgets to take prosium, and so because of that, he gets a sense of what it's like to be <laughs> regular. Yeah. And. Um, His son is being complete badass on him, and uh, he's saying you have to go replenish your stuff. And then he yeah. goes and he sees how everyone's tables are the same. And he starts to rearrange. Them. So he starts to feel something after yeah. he meets this one woman, and basically, I mean, it goes without saying, he uh, he refuses to go with the program, and he fights the system. Breaks, yeah. So it, you know, so again, like in retrospect, I don't know how this wouldn't be one of my top films, now, but I really love it. Yeah. I love it in a I, way I like I think it's a movie that good action science yeah. fiction film, exactly. right? Exactly. You can't say it's one of the greatest of all time but yeah. man it's it's solid it's solid it's it's a really fun movie and yeah. it pace, it's paced really well and Ty Diggs is in it and he's the villain like at some point and it, it, I think in terms of science fiction ideas it's got some really good ones I don't think it would ever happen I think it's like it it would it's like a long extended action version of a black mirror episode where it's an exaggerated kind world of, yeah. it's not realistic like say like you know uh, like say anything like that by in, Neil Blomkamp you know it's yeah. like set in Johannesburg you know it's got like some real city vibe like district yes. 9 has that feel like you know it's science fiction but it's very realistic science yeah, fiction actually, yeah. in that sense um but this one feels like it's uh, a, a an art piece kind of thing <laughs> yeah, like you know like much. this is not realistic but just go with it you know like yeah. this is imagine what the world would be like so for that reason alone i think it still holds up in to some degree uh christian bale is great in it uh mm-hmm. he's i mean i mean he's got literally one expression to make in the whole movie which is yeah which I works mean, but that was the job description <laughs> yeah and i think what really uh, lifts the movie is the action man the action really yeah. works because i don't think they could sustain just the science fiction story of it yeah yeah and like yeah. the entire like last no the entire second half not even the last third is yeah. just like I mean those gunfu set pieces exactly, are, exactly. but the yeah. gunfu set pieces are great yeah yeah Which, and, and gunfu by the way is amazing it is pretty cool <laughs> it's I literally just gunfu with guns it remind me a lot of like the John Wick kind of school of yes, yeah, fighting yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah so it's pretty cool um yeah that's that's it i mean mm-hmm. i have nothing more to say on the on the the science like you know the the conceptually but like it's all yeah right. because i mean like there's not a there's not a very heavy yeah. like revelation that yeah, you're supposed exactly. to have over yourself at the end of it i i feel like the intent of the movie was also to walk away going like nice, nice. that was really cool <laughs> <laughs> pretty much yeah. all right cool so let's just uh, take a break from our own choices we're going to uh, yeah. let's read out what jishnu had to say I already knew he was going to select this movie. Yeah, even I had a strong feeling. Yeah, because this is one of his movie. and it's good that he picked this because he's picked a comedy, a yes. science fiction comedy, which uh I which mean, is underrated. Which is I got it. Yeah. Uh so, Jishnu has picked Galaxy Quest. Of course he has. He's spoken about Galaxy Quest like a couple of times on the show. Yeah. Uh in a couple of We episodes. We discussed it on our Sci-Fi Comedies episode. Sci-Fi as well. Comedies episode, yeah. yeah because so, it's one of the best. So, I I mean, if you guys want to hear about it from the horse's mouth, mm-hmm. you can uh, listen to that, but let's just read out what he wrote. So he says uh, unprecedented and needlessly amazed balls cast which is true <laughs> but he started the email with <laughs> <laughs> well he starts the email with hi guys my name is Jishnu long time listener first time writer big big fan big fan big fan <laughs> not big big fan <laughs> <laughs> big fan big fan sorry go ahead a fan so twice <laughs> you have to say it nice. Is that a thing? That's <laughs> no. not a thing. <laughs> Unprecedented and needlessly amazed balls cast. Think about it. If that cast was put together in 2016, which unfortunately it can't. Oh yeah, it's true. Which is Mr. Rickman. Ah, Mr. Rickman this, this RIP. Is, But yeah, so, what an amazing cast. Uh, Tim yeah. Allen, Alan Rickman, uh, Sigourney Weaver. Sigourney yeah. Weaver. Yeah. I mean, was again, that the first is... time she was in a comedy. I feel like because I, I can't remember. <laughs> Ghostbusters doing... was this before Ghostbusters? Oh no 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 no! Uh, Ghostbusters was way before. Yeah, it was nineteen ninety one. Nine, yeah, nineties. The first one was in nineteen eighty nine, right? The first Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters. Yeah, and then the second one was nineteen ninety one. I felt like it was early eighties. Am I confusing this with Batman? <laughs> Batman was eighty nine as well. Ah, okay. Yeah, but anyway, yeah. Right. So go, goes without anyway. saying that this was like. So he a- says, that. if that cast was put together in two thousand sixteen, whatever film it was for would almost definitely have to be a part of a major franchise and, in all prob- probability, a Disney property. Hmm. 
uh, yeah yes. i think indie comedies are doing well these days though they are yeah but this i think it was just when it came out probably was at a good time because people were still these guys were all in their prime really yeah. like tim, tim allen, allen was a star was at that point home improvement yeah, yeah exactly yeah, of course Uh, accessibility it pokes fun at all of the clichés from science fiction specifically the original star trek run in such a way that even audiences that have never seen shatner's show could follow every joke yeah. i'd say this is true this is very like, true like yeah. it's very it was, obviously set up as a star trek parody it was not uh, i don't i don't want to say it was not like super deep that's what i'm saying you know like movies like is it possible to do a movie like galaxy quest today because mm-hmm. marvel movies spoof themselves in their own movies right now you know like in the sense that yeah. like a guardians of the galaxy or which is actually quite a fu- like it is a comedy in that yeah. sense or even an ant-man which pokes like a lot of fun at the fun genre a lot of the marvel yeah, so especially. is it possible to still have a galaxy quest i feel like it is um, i mean Uh, yeah, man. There's always scope to do. Yeah. Like, like these aren't hard comedies. Yeah, let's say. exactly. It's not hard. Like because you, I feel like you'd have to now make fun of the new tropes, like the new, yeah. like the much newer kind of. I don't know how they do it. I'm not sure. You, I guess you'd probably take the self awareness to a whole new level. Oh, maybe basically. like Deadpool. It's like still, Deadpool. It's a, yeah. but it's a so superhero like, film. It is at the end of the day. And it's still man, maybe after Deadpool, it's hard to do. It's like super a Galaxy hard Ghost to do movie. it. Yeah, you can't do it. You might as well just do it in the film itself <laughs> yeah. and make that part of it. Anyway, but yeah. So go on. Anything else that you have to say? Uh, the fanboys. I like how Jishnu is uh, given each of his points a subtitle. <laughs> <laughs> so point number three, subtitle: the fanboys' dream. <laughs> 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 the way in which the friendly alien beings are so enthralled by the crew of actors and their historical documents is very mi- much a mirror image of Justin Long and his nerd friends <laughs> fan gasping back on earth. Yeah. Uh the notion that a bunch of fanboys from across the galaxy unite in all their nerdy glory to help save their heroes whose job is to simply uplift people's spirits with their art on screen is quintessentially every nerd's dream in one way or another. Absolutely true. Also reflected in fanboys by Abhijit Kini. Sorry go. That ahead. is true actually. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, this is basically like it's uh it's a fan fiction dream come true. Yeah, it pretty much is. Yeah, it's it's like fan fiction, yeah. Movies aside, wouldn't we all love to have our favorite artist ask us as fans of their work to help them out by digging into our own obsessive well of knowledge of their mm. own work yeah well of knowledge well not well of knowledge oh well no, of like a oh, well, well a well like the one a jack well and jill went to yes but only one no yeah sorry yeah this is true yeah <laughs> like basically the premise behind 90% of fan fiction pretty much yeah which is like yeah harry potter is amazing but has he met the new indian exchange student <laughs> <laughs> Din- dinkar dinkar dinks yeah yeah my god yeah pretty much yeah Oh gosh. Galaxy Quest is like for me like one of those movies which I I think I saw like like it's like Gremlins you know like I I see I've seen it. Yeah. But I haven't like I don't think I've revisited it in a while so, so I uh, must even watch I haven't, it. I feel like Especially I just, since Jishnu has been talking about yeah, it. So, yeah. It's come up a bunch actually. Yeah. It in my mind whenever I think about it it feels very 90s like all like that space balls kind like, of like yeah, yeah space yeah. ballsy yeah. like you know it's amazing but yeah. i don't know i never felt motivated National to go watch it again stars, yeah yeah but yeah i i feel like it's worth watching again inexplicably one of the best death scenes quelic dying in the arms mm. of alan rickman's dr lazarus this is true <laughs> by grab then he's hammer. like he's put the entire coat in <laughs> by grab thas hammer you'll be avenged <laughs> single tear <laughs> correct and uh, the toy story effect which Ep- is also a name of one of our episodes by the way When we spoke about Alan Rickman, by way oh back. yes, one of my like right, very right, earliest right. episodes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the Toy Story effect. Every now and again, when I rewatch it, I like to pretend that Buzz Lightyear is captaining the NSA protector. <laughs> But I also do that when I watch Tim Allen in Santa Claus. <laughs> <laughs> my God, Santa uh, Claus is Santa- also a great movie. <laughs> what what is, that movie was called? The Santa Claus. The Santa Claus. Oh, the Santa where Claus. Where he kills Santa. That's right. And so he has that to become right. Santa. There was a sequel also. There was Santa Claus too. Yeah, I don't know why I'm confusing it with Bad Santa. Santa sees the fan, <laughs> the fine print. <laughs> Bad Santa, starring Billy uh, Bob. Billy Bob, yeah. There was a sequel to Bad Santa. Yeah, it came out a couple of years back. Yeah, my gosh, this, this year so it came many, out this year. There's so many Tezzas. Santa movies. Oh well, my yeah. gosh, Santa's a big Christmas. deal. Christmas, Fred Claus is Fred another Claus. movie. Oh my <laughs> gosh, then Elf. Elf, oh yeah, Elf, Elf is such a good movie. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, cool. So get on to that. We're talking about comedies. So, so Galaxy Quest. So Galaxy Quest great movie uh and uh I th- yeah I think we've <laughs> talked about it a lot <laughs> yeah clearly yeah so let's move on to a choice from Basho uh, from Basho also uh, Geek Fruit core member yes and she spoke about she she picked a film that was anyway on our list yeah. and we were going to talk about it's a movie called Sunshine yes now Sunshine is a movie that was directed by Danny Boyle this is pre Slumdog 
I want to say Yeah definitely pre slum dog, dog right? uh, I think it was around the after the beach right I was going to say after 28 days later right uh, Oh after that also Yeah I think so really? because he he nailed that concept of you know that the filming you know style which he has with his DOP which is yeah. on a stick basically a <laughs> selfie stick <laughs> pretty much uh, school of DOP but yeah man so uh, sunshine is this movie that came out uh, a while back Um uh, great cast Killian Murphy leads like an all star cast. Two thousand seven, yeah, two thousand seven. Um, it's uh, who else is that? It's uh, is it this guy? Um, it's uh, Chris, Chris Evans. Chris Evans and uh, uh, what's your and Cillian Murphy? Killian Murphy. Killian Murphy. Yeah, he's because he's Irish. Is he a Killian? Yeah, he's a Killian. What? Yeah, I have. I've, I've had to do this for too many people. So Killian Murphy, Ray Fine. Ray Fine. I've I had to do that. I guess I've never. Ray Fine. I yeah. feel like I haven't even <laughs> seen him on like a talk show or anything where this would have been cleared up. Yeah, yeah. Because Sersha the- Ronan is the new <laughs> Sersha, one. Sersha, Sersha Ronan. Is it Sersha? Sersha. No, dude. She says Sersha. Yeah. No. It's Sersha. I oh, feel like I saw this whole thing on James Garden where like they spent five minutes on it. Yeah, and yeah. I still don't know. So. Yeah, I think Stephen Colbert also did something. Uh, yeah, but anyway, I think all of the guys just <laughs> say their names r- really vaguely. Like next up we have Ray Sersha. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So anyway, Sunshine, a uh, movie about a crew heading towards the sun because the sun is dying and they're to deliver. It's the most deliver, classic of sci-fi concepts. Yeah. Let's deliver a payload. Explode the sun basically. <laughs> deliver a payload into the sun so that we have more sun. <laughs> yeah, we have, we have sun for some more time. Basically, they need to reset the sun. It's yeah. like when your Wi-Fi dies out and you gotta like pull the plug and put Everybody it back in. Everybody, we try turning it off and <laughs> yeah. on again. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, they've got to uh, throw a nuclear bomb into the sun. Yeah, and it's a cool concept. Like it's because the graphics are really nicely. Um, it's really well made movie. Yeah, because Danny Boyle, especially, it yeah. looks great. And amazing cast, and it's a very serious movie because uh, so there's like and they've explained all the science also of it really nicely, like that oxygen is being remade by this you know little mm. these farms these farms that they have uh, he has on uh, on uh, on, on board the, the ship, ship. yeah and. Um, And yeah, just and they you know they have this really cool deflectors like shielding the solar shielding so that they obviously they don't like yeah because they're literally going right up into the, the sun. sun yeah exactly so there's all those issues of like they need those shields so <clears throat> they stay safe they can't like look at it and stuff yeah obviously. exactly they yeah there's a bunch yeah. of things there's that a they bunch have of rules do. that they have to follow yeah so basically they have to. Uh, Uh, well they are the second ship that the second. Is, there was one that failed basically yes. yeah and uh, the premise is essentially like the plot kicks in really when yeah. they realize that the original ship is floating nearby yeah basically. and so they go and they visit it and it's got some really creepy stuff yeah. that happens in this movie this movie is kind of like yeah, horror like right the visuals yeah. are quite they do striking. that uh, spliced thing you know that spliced frame yeah Uh, editing, but ah, yes, yes, just yes, basically yes. you're like it's it's when they go and visit this ship, yeah. and they're seeing everything is dark and all, and then suddenly there's a like a frame of just like a uh, you don't know what it is, but yeah, it's it horror movie editing. Out. Hold it on, freaked me out, and I thought I was going crazy, <laughs> and then I was just like, wait, did I just see something? Because I didn't expect it. It was yeah. so random and really well done. And the second time it happens, I was like, damn, this is like not what I thought this movie <laughs> was gonna be. I thought it was gonna be a happy film about delivering a nuclear bomb to the sun. It's about sunshine. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Misleading title. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so uh, basically, the the plot moves forward, and they realize they've taken aboard a passenger from that ship who wasn't dead, mm-hmm. and that really kind of changes the game. Mm-hmm. Um, it's really about. Uh, it's obviously it's got to, a lot to do with the whole human aspect of it. It's got a lot to do with, you know, uh, I think just. internal politics of how the spaceship should be run yeah. what they're trying to commit to do they, they kind of feel like it's a suicide mission but it's not really it could they could be saved it but was, just yes. it goes in like a hundred different directions but i just think yeah, there's a lot of themes that come up actually yeah but just in terms of like a good science fiction story mm-hmm. this was this is great it's man a solid movie. and it's a great like dramatic film i feel like there's a lot of good performances yes. like chris evans is Fantastic Dude, in this. Chris Evans is in so many solid movies. Yeah, we were just talking like, about this forget earlier. Forget Captain America. Yeah, like uh, he was in this other movie called Push, which was shot uh, entirely like I think in Hong Kong or Singapore or something like that. And it's like just like you know that really shaky cam thing, uh, and it's just like a really nice story about like these. It's based on a graphic novel where they have powers and stuff, and he has this one power of uh, you know that he can he basically like Jean Grey's yeah, push people. Pretty much. <laughs> But a really cool film. Uh, he's in that. He's in he's in this movie. Like he's done some. He's in another one which. Which we, I feel like we should talk which about. Which will called, come up? Yeah, uh, let's go for it. Like we, we should talk about. But just just to end this one, Sunshine, great movie. I think most people have have seen it. I think it's just underrated. It right? is definitely underrated, underrated because I feel like film. it yeah. hasn't come up in conversation as much, and it's uh, easily one of the lesser known films. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Post Lum Dog. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, right. it's not like people went back and. S- I mean, Twenty Eight Days Later is probably like his famous one his before. His famous one. Even The Beach is such a good movie. The Beach is a yeah, great I don't know. Movie. Like a lot of people don't like that film. The Beach. Know. Yeah. 
it's just why i don't know i like, i think it's not i mean it's not like a classic or anything but it's a solid like yeah. like dude if you're flipping it's through the Leo. tv and it's on yeah. you'll be like yeah let's watch the beach the man beach, yeah great movie great human yeah. movie anyway sorry again overrated is your uh, how many hours is it 127 hours I actually really love that I movie. I think it's a good like I it was I feel like it was this post Lum Dog effect where yeah, everyone was like man maybe. this movie it's a good movie it's not like come on it's not amazing. I really, I really liked it. <laughs> I thought I thought it was good. I I thought uh yeah, Rahman did a better job on that soundtrack than he did for Slum Dog. That is actually true. Yeah. Slum Dog so, I don't why, It's why not bad. Sometimes all right. It's not it's not terrible. Okay, I think we have time for just one more film then. All right. Time. All right. Yes. So we're going to be quick about this but I just want to go through some notable mentions before we get to the last one. Mm-hmm. Um what did I have here? Predestination. Have what you seen is it? No. Predest. Oh my god, Dinkar! If you haven't seen Predestination, this is the one of the best time travel films I've ever seen what? What? in l- life. Explain Ethan, yourself. Ethan Hawke. Okay. Uh, Sarah and Snook. and Sarah Snook in a breakthrough role for her. Right. Uh, I can't explain it because to explain it is to give away the yeah, entire right, right, plot right. of the movie. Right. But I don't want to. It's just know that you have to watch it, and when you watch it, then you have to go back and watch it again. That's All that's right. the kind of movie it is. Nice. It's kind of like I mean, it's not hardcore like Primer is, you know, like which is like Primer is like too dude, you need intense. charts to understand that movie. Also, yeah. one of uh, my note, but I feel like it's not underrated. It's not. It's, it's not. It's a massive. It's the movie. indie hit that made Chunk Pretty right? much. Um, other movie, The Man from Earth. Do. Uh, amazing movie is, about yeah. uh, how do I explain it? It's just about a discussion in a room with many professors, and one guy says, "Hey," and there's one guy who leaves every ten years from wherever he, whichever job he works at, because he says, "Hey, I can't stay for long," uh, and he's like, "Why?" and he just gives an awkward reason. He says, "Well, you know, I just move from place to place all the time." And they finally, they you know, he humors them. He says, "Well, what if a man from the..." Uh, I can't remember what age from the from the caveman age, the mm. prehistoric age, survived till this day, and they go on a, a d- discussion with these other who one's a history professor, one's a geology professor, and they talk about it, and it starts to reveal himself that is this possible that this guy that is this that is guy, the guy. <laughs> because he has knowledge which is incredible. Mm. So it's a great movie. The entire movie happens in one room, and there's some insane plot twists. It's, just, it's excellent. Um, the last movie which I just want to is a notable mention is a movie uh, called I Origins I don't know if you've seen this I haven't seen I Origins movie. is the second film by the director I can't remember right now he made this other movie called Another Earth about how Another Earth can basically starts appearing and becomes closer and closer mm-hmm. and an amazing drama uh, but this movie is really about how um, this guy he's a he's a scientist and he's just trying to uncover the relationship that people everybody's everyone's iris is basically unique it's like a snowflake right nobody yeah. has to say but until he starts to find out whether there's another person who could possibly have this and what? if they do another th- person who has the same iris exactly okay. and uh, if it's possible that means the so there's something of the soul and the only way to uh, identify okay. it is by you know having the same uh, Iris and right. so uh, in a you know tragic accident in the beginning he tries to find this person who he cared about mm-hmm. and he he goes all the way to India and, got, and it's like half of it set in India and it's beautiful this movie is like like it's super emotional this and amazing really good yeah it's an Hold excellent on. is film. it I origins like the body part the I no no I as in I I, I like I robot but yeah. with origins instead yes oh, exactly yeah. so yeah that was my last movie which I, I think right. everyone should if I, so basically we come down to this last film I think we both know what it is it's a movie called Snowpiercer yeah <laughs> yeah now another solid Chris Evans joint amazing Chris Evans movie all right so you you give the you give the premise and uh, we'll just talk uh, about so quickly so Snowpiercer is basically set in this uh, again like yeah, post apocalyptic society <laughs> yeah. uh, where all these guys live on a train that is like basically this massive train yeah. that contains all of uh, yeah, humanity. Yeah, much. because the world froze over. The world froze over. Yes, yeah. in a and random twist. So this of train me. basically like just keeps uh, circling yeah. the earth. Yeah, and Chris Evans and gang live towards. So like the entire so, train is split up in these like class. Yeah, class based carriages. Yeah, and these guys are obviously like back at the back of the train. Yeah, and they have to fight their way up. Yeah, to first class. Yeah, basically. basically like, yeah, <laughs> because there, there needs to be a revolution because they're being yeah. treated like shit. And the entire revolution is basically like the struggle for them to like it's physically <laughs> <laughs> it's physical uh, manifested like, in their struggle getting from the back of the train to the f- front of the train. I love it. Much. I yeah. love I loved this movie like so much. Like I you know I I'd heard about it when it was coming out. I don't know how I missed it in the theater. I didn't have much. A very big release or anything like that. Directed it was by Byung Hung Lee, the guy who's in the movie itself. Yes. 
And um, This was in between Captain America's? Yeah, I think right? in between uh, the first and the second So you think it'd get more traction? Yeah I guess, Evans, like, but I, you know, I, I don't know what it is. Um, like, it's an Asian film, it's a Korean film, but it was. I don't think it had a main, like, a big release at least in the in the states. But it is on Netflix and uh, in Netflix India as well. So you guys definitely should check it out. Um, yeah, just one of the like sharpest action science fiction films. Like again, in that action yeah. space, but also got a lot of like thought to it. You know, like the fact that you know it's a physical. You're like you said, the physical manifestation of of, of class social strata in yeah, yeah class separation, literally. And uh, I think Tilda Swinton is there in this, and she yeah. is insanely oh, man, I forgot that. good in this. Dude, she Tilda is Swinton, hilariously awesome, and she's yeah. such a good actress. It's crazy, right? And um, and and Ed Harris is there in this also mm-hmm. as, yeah. as 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 the main, and as well as and uh, sorry, William Hurt also is there in this. So it's got a. It's Dude, really it's a good cast, cast. Now that I think about it, and just Chris Evans and sorry Jamie Bell also. Wow, sorry, just really Jamie good. Bell. <laughs> Jamie Bell. Uh, so, so Chris Evans becomes this de facto leader, tries to lead people from one compartment, to the other. and you know, obviously the herd's thin as they keep getting knocked yeah. off, and it's just him towards the end with his two. And they go through all these like variety of yeah, like they go through ultra luxury compartments basically. Yeah, yeah. This yeah. is all about Chris Evans wanting to get into first class. Pretty much, <laughs> like basically, you know, when it's the it's a science fiction. Exaggerated version of when we asked to get bumped up in place. <laughs> yeah. So and get yeah. Down. Yeah, and you get shot down, and then, then yeah. you have to fight your way to the front <laughs> of the plane. But yeah, man, I think this was just a really sharp film, really well paced, uh, and shot really awesomely because it's like it's literally shot in like yeah. the in the in of the width of this compartment, and just some insane revelations. Like I love how this movie just you know there's every time you think there's something else going to happen, like it. I love when movies like. Change my exp- You know we all have An understanding of yeah. what uh, Should happen You know happen, what right? you expect When you walk in Yeah, yeah when you You know when you watch An AI film Or somebody's gonna get Sentient or something like that mm-hmm. But like when they Change the game Like when you When they do something Truly unexpected And you're just like Wow this is not some- And this is coming from A bunch of nerds Who kind of have seen The templates like Evolve you know Over time yes, And like true. when you find Something that is truly Like original and stuff Like even, even if it's Slightly original from Like everything else Why we like Stranger Things also You know yeah. it, was, it was an original Fresh Kind of thing And similarly This movie did Created that feeling In me And I was just like Wow This is a really sharp movie Really good action In it also Really like short well, And the cast is and, uh, Brilliant yeah. man They're so good And I feel like I don't know When you watch it You don't go in with like Sky high expectations Exactly I think that's, no that was it also yeah. That's another re- Like another movie like that Which uh, I also considered Edge of Tomorrow Oh, Very similar I, feelings Of course here. Such because again movie. I went into that movie Expecting nothing And then you're like This is good It then was amazing like, This is so good Yeah yeah It was really good And, and just really good Time travel Was, stuff uh, was Snowpiercer A Korean movie by the way He was yeah yeah It was yeah. Okay Directed by that guy right Byung Hung Lee Right Yeah Okay but it was like It, was, it wasn't it was an American studio I don't think it, No it wasn't an American studio I, I think it was I think it was it distributed of... by Lionsgate I think Lionsgate had something to do with it Okay But uh, yeah Mostly uh, created there And Awesome hmm. Awesome movie So Yeah, yeah. Sure. Great movie So that's our list Guys You can I catch mean, all yeah, these films like there's on Netflix so many more That uh, we I, haven't covered Are they on Netflix Are all these on Netflix I don't think so I doubt it I know Snowpiercer is yeah. I know Edge of Tomorrow is uh, Moon isn't actually yeah, Moon I remember because I looked it up On Netflix yesterday And it wasn't yeah. there Equilibrium is Equilibrium is Because that's where I watched it as well yes. uh, Yeah uh, so there's a bunch of these Are there So you I can catch those yeah, We should do Like a companion article Where we talk about we A bunch of movies We, we should, haven't got. We to. should do that So look for that On our website Yeah if, if we're talking about not, The odds are It's probably on the website Right now yes. So yeah um, Yeah so that's our episode um, We don't have any Breaking news for this week We're gonna skip that But if you have any uh, oh, I do have like something oh, you to yes. Oh, well, to congratulate you on really, but uh, Dwayne Johnson is the sexiest man alive. He is the sexiest man Let's alive. Let's all celebrate. Uh, did you? Did I need no, People magazine sure. <laughs> to tell me that they're validating your feelings? Yeah, he he is the cool. And by, sorry, the other thing. Uh, d- another reason why Dwayne Johnson is now the most insane guy on the planet. Uh, he's uh, now shared the stage with Lin Manuel Miranda. Yeah, yeah. So he's he's, he's written officially songs uh, with. No, he didn't write. He, did he write it with him? Lin Manuel did the so the score for Moana, yeah. right? So I, they just did a performance of it, like like at least yeah, at the time yeah. of the recording, like two three days ago. And I was just like, Lin Manuel and The Rock, never in my life what would I great think. Combo. But like so, um, this guy, I can't. He's oh, gonna man. be the president. I feel like Lin Manuel should be the president. Eight. He can't. Let's no? do like Isn't a. Isn't he from? He's got an American citizen. Uh, he's he's an American thought, citizen. Uh, but I thought the his, whole of Puerto Rico, like he's from. His parents are from Puerto, Puerto Rico, right? Sorry, is he from? He's from he's from Puerto Rico, right? Yeah. So okay, he is American. Yeah. He's American. Yeah. 
So amazing. He's Hamilton. <laughs> he's he is Hamilton. He's not, oh, he should man. be given a green card. A Johnson for... <laughs> Miranda ticket. <laughs> My gosh. Yeah. Oh wow. That would be amazing. Dude, this country a would like and a Puerto Rican. Huh? That country would explode. It would be <laughs> yeah. insane. Like for minorities generally. Yeah. Awesome. Well, we live in a different time. By yeah. the way, there are these uh, great little ads that uh, Lin Manuel and Dwayne Johnson did together oh, about. I I think they play in the Alamo Draft House, which is one of those right. like, cool American theaters. Correct. Uh, about turning off your phone before the thing, and they're like hilarious. Oh, awesome! You've got to watch those. Man, The Rock is the greatest entertainer on the planet, dude. <laughs> <laughs> there is nobody like that guy. Okay, cool. I'm the sexiest man alive. And so. he's, he, there's nothing he, he can do wrong. <laughs> I, right. I don't, I don't get it. Anyway, all right. Um, we're gonna stop this episode. Yes. And so, um, where can people get in touch with us? Contactgeekfood at gmail dot com is where you can write in about all your favorite underrated science fiction films, or just drop us a message on our Facebook uh, page, which is or or us any what of our social media. What are your favorite underrated uh, pop culture podcasts from India? Are we? Good? Are we though? Yeah, we are. We were. We were <laughs> yeah, I was just gonna say. We're angling for a compliment. Oh, yeah. oh, sorry. <laughs> I mean, I can't do it. I'm, it's whoever is like sitting in their home. We gave them enough yeah. blank space for hint, them to hint. say, like, yeah, me. <laughs> um, all right, cool. So yeah, so you can write to us on on Facebook or on Instagram or on Twitter. We're at Geekfruit HQ over there, and our website is Geekfruit In where you should find the article. Thank you, Dinkar. Thank you, Tejas. All right, we'll see you guys next week. Bye, you nerds. Hey, so now that you're done listening to our show, you should really listen to a show that's equally good, if not better. It's called Cyrus Says, and it is good. It's very good. It Quite features good. Cyrus. And other people. And his name is in the title of the show. And it's possibly more random than ours. Yes, and but that's actually saying something. Eloquent. So everyone, go listen to him. What you said. Our podcasts bring all the boys to the yard, and damn right, they're better than yours. But you don't need to stand outside in the yard. Just follow IVM Podcasts on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We might be on Tinder too. Just go ahead and swipe right.